So I'm going to talk a little bit about where Taspot came from. Now, Taspot himself here isn't all that interesting. He is nothing more and nothing less than a Rob robot holding what we call a replay device. So one of the things that's interesting here is that, I'm going to back up here for a second. As emulators became more accurate than the really bad Fantasia all the way back in 2003, they got to a level of accuracy where they were matching frame for frame how the actual hardware worked. And that allowed for some really interesting things to happen. I'm going to go through the quick, a quick history of this. The first console verification device that was attempted was this PIC device from someone named True. It was able to press buttons, kind of sort of worked. Now also in 2009, someone who's actually here at the event and didn't tell anybody in task videos that this was a thing, Jakku made a replay device with a BS2 piece of hardware. Uh, and he managed to complete the entire first level of Super Mario Brothers 1 before anyone else did. But we didn't know about it in the Task Videos community at the time. So Micro 500 was the first person in 2011 to make a device, which he called his NES replay device, that was able to complete an entire game. And that was famously used by Dark Cobalt back in SGDQ 2011 as the first time a task was shown. And you can see that the device was a little bit dangerous. <laughs> a lot of wires on a breadboard. There were a bunch of other devices that came out that same year. Droid 64 from SoulCal, which played in Nintendo 64 uh, games. Micro 500 made his own N64 replay device. But Taskbot has his own special birth. And, and there's some stuff that's not actually in these slides that I got to tell you because you care. You're, you're, you're a Game done, Games Done Quick community and you actually care about this. In 2013, GoSonic extended his device to make an SNES and a Genesis device. And True made his NES SNES replay device specifically for uh, SGD, I'm sorry, AGDQ 2014. And it was a very inexpensive device. It was able to stream data through it, but it was also kind of limited in data rates. Um, so in 2014, I took a Rob robot. You can actually see that initial picture there. This was, this was sitting on my desk all the way back in the end of 2013. And I, I just took re Legos and the replay devices from True and a, a, it was a Raspberry Pi at the time. I threw it together and I called it a Rob Berry Pi. And I made a submission for AGDQ 2014 and it was, it was accepted and immediately, I believe it was Mecha Richter said, I'm gonna dig this Taskbot run. And he's been known as Taskbot ever since. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name sucked, I just gotta tell you. My name was terrible. Uh, yeah, that was definitely an improvement. Yeah, it was definitely an improvement. Well, I don't know. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you got to give credit to somebody else. <laughs> I now consider myself the keeper of Taskbot. I I don't necessarily consider him my uh, my mine only. And Taskbot is pretty much any combination of a replay device with with, Pat, with Rob. You know, he's he's just this cute little guy right here. He's his own little person. Right now, the replay device I have on here is a different board that we made later, but. In 2015, True made a multi-replay device that was self-contained, which was kind of interesting. Uh, every other device we have relies on a PC, but he made one that was completely self-contained with an SD card on it. That's the one you used for the Atari round, wasn't it? It was, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did the one and only console verification of an Atari 2600 run, which was Dragster. You'll never <laughs> guess what time we got. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> if you could just hold on there for a it, uh, I'll mention too, now in 2017 with the Game Boy Player, we have another a revision of that using Game Boy Interface with Extremes as platform. So that's improved since then. Yeah. And you might want to watch the block tonight. For those of you who are, who are live in the room, you might want to watch the task block tonight. Mm -hmm. We might be employing something about that. Stay tuned. So it's time for a live demo. It's quite honestly way over time for a live demo. We're 30 minutes into an hour talk and we haven't even done a live demo. So it's time to fix that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull up the NES here. So we have our NES. I'm gonna turn them off. Um, That's the Super NES. Yeah. There you go. I couldn't stand up far enough. Well, I could get a uh, time assistance after our lovely assistant to come poke buttons. Uh, well, yeah, I could. Our lovely or assistant. Illy. Our lovely assistant. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so. What I'm going to do here is uh, start up. Oh, you know, I never actually figured out what the uh, address for that thing was. Oh. Oh, well, then this is going to be really entertaining. <laughs> okay, so watch this. We do have audio if it's coming out of HDMI. Oh, if it actually, it will if it actually hits buttons, which it didn't. Um, oh, is it plugged in? Not doing anything. Which is always fun. This is this is normal Taskbot stuff. Yeah, this is pretty. Yeah, this is pretty classic for Taskbot. Just 
ignore us entirely and not do anything. We're working with 30-year-old hardware, so just Get bear happens. with us. Okay, we should have audio coming out of HDMI. Okay, of course we don't, because nothing ever works right the first time. We'll get you audio. You have no audio coming through HDMI? Yeah. I think it's trying to do it in... Uh, Is that OBS set to your normal device still? Yeah, it should be. Let's double check. Well, then there's that. <laughs> so that happens. So while I talk through, while, the, while we're doing, getting audio set up, which unfortunately we didn't get a chance to test beforehand, I want to talk about what's actually happening here because it's pretty nutty. I mean really nutty. <laughs> so I've got my slides up here. So we, we put some limits on ourselves. We didn't want any, um, we didn't want any cheating. We, we, we didn't want to put something between the game and the console, and we didn't want to do anything like press uh, uh, up and down or left and right simultaneously, because you could do that, but anyway. But we did take advantage of a hardware bug, which I'm gonna explain really quick. Uh, you can, well, I'll just run through this really fast. So what we do at the beginning of this task is we're moving shells back and forth, one little step at a time, and we used a Lewis script to help figure out where we needed the shells to be. So we're using the, their X and Y coordinates and where they, they left the screen to arrange a series of bytes in memory. Then we abuse a DPCM audio glitch that exists in all NES consoles, and we use that to pass alternating patterns of buttons on each pole. So every time it asks for input, we give it a different set of input, and it needs two of them to be the same in a row for it to accept that as valid uh, controller button presses and, and give them onto the game. We keep it so busy that it doesn't do some housekeeping it would normally do, and it does that weird glitchy thing you saw. Now, the next thing we did is we executed what was in the controller registers, uh, jumped to the address of where all those shells were, effectively, and then did this. So after we did this high-speed block loader, we did a, this little scene here that you saw, this demo scene that had all these credits at the bottom, and moved on to this hidden stage five. This is what we showed at AGDQ 2017, uh, but you didn't see all the behind-the-scenes stuff. Nope. Okay. Well, I guess we'll see how far we get. So this device here always going to have some trouble. So let me make sure that Pulse Audio really is going out HDMI. So one, one of the things we have is an audio init here. So I'll init that. And what should we grab? You know what I'm going to do is let's just be brave. And go straight for oh dear. this. Yeah, it is what you think it is. Because <laughs> I've got it. Doing it live. Yeah, we're doing it live. Uh, we are going to play something local. There we go. Mm, maybe not. Although, I don't see anything happening. Oh, because it, isn't, it hasn't hit, uh, it is, it's actually going. It's just you can't, uh, it, it, it's really quiet at the very beginning. See oh, it? There, there the yeah, there it goes, yeah. There we go. You now, can see the visualization board. Yeah, let me try this. Well, I'm actually not getting any sound out of anything. I think I need to kill Pulse Audio and restart it. Okay. Why not? <laughs> so I, I'm, I get, I'm getting the sound effects. Like, I can hear sound effects from... Uh... Okay, we're just going to kill all of Pulse Audio and see how it recovers. <laughs> Are you plugged into the console properly here? Am I plugged into the console properly? What do you mean? Just make sure we are getting inputs. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're definitely getting inputs. Every single uh, every single time we try to do something crazy, it backfires. It wouldn't be a task about stream otherwise. Exactly. Okay, you're getting audio now. So mid demo, we get to do this. Always fun. Always fun when you get to. Okay. Yeah, I have to draw that again now. Oh, you're going to have to draw it again? No, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, oh no. 